Specific attention should be given to the unloading and handling of pipes, application of rubber rings, excavation of the trench, trench foundations, bedding materials, placement of the pipes, jointing, backfilling and compaction. Any variations to these specific points of pipeline design must be validated by the designer to ensure the integrity of the design and products are maintained during and after installation. Safe working practices should always be followed when unloading and handling reinforced concrete pipes on site using the requisite certified lifting gear with a minimum of handling to avoid damage. Pipes arriving on site shall be checked and then carefully unloaded and stockpiled as near to the installation as practicable. The site foreman should inspect the pipes for any damage and for correct delivery before the pipes are signed off and unloaded. Stockpiling means safe storage so that pipes cannot be moved without the requisite plant and do not obstruct vision. Pipes should always be chocked for stability to avoid rolling away when stockpiled on any site. Before commencement of work, there should be as much information available on the site conditions as possible. This includes any natural surface features, ground conditions or current underground services. When trench excavation commences, ensure the excavator bucket size conforms to the dimension of the trench as designed. The excavated material that is suitable for backfilling should be placed securely and as near to the excavation as is safe, so as not to fall back into the trench. Trench shoring in unstable ground is mandatory from a safety aspect, as is the proper installation and removal of the shoring elements. Remember, take care on site at all times. The trench foundation shall be free of irregularities and protruding hard rocks. It should be firm and at a level plane to receive the requisite layer of bedding material. Dig too deep and bedding material costs rise. Dig too shallow and pipes will not have the uniform foundation they're designed for. The best bedding material is free flowing and acts as a cushion for the pipe. The objective is to have the material that supports the pipe in grade and hardness. The material should be granular and easy to spread, requiring minimum compaction. Holes or recesses should be scooped out to accommodate the pipe socket when applicable. The pipe load carrying capacity relies on uniform support to maximise its effectiveness. Take care to place the bedding on the correct grade to ensure that real economies are achieved and rework is avoided. Pipes are expected to be laid with the socket upstream to avoid any slippage on steeper grades. The grades are checked once the pipe is laid in position and prior to pushing the pipe home. Many pipes are manufactured with elliptical steel reinforcement and require the pipe to be placed in a specific position, top up. It is also necessary to lay the pipes with tight tolerances for line and grade and not to compromise the pipe support throughout. Socket pipes are generally supplied with rubber rings for the joints. They should be kept clean and dry before application and only use rubber rings that are supplied with the pipe. Before socketed pipes are laid, fit the rubber ring above ground and make sure the matching surfaces are clean and free of any debris. Ensure the ring is uniformly tensioned for ease of jointing. This applies to rolling rubber rings and skid rings. Surfaces shall be dry when using rolling rubber rings, whereas with skid rings, the socket and ring must be lubricated. Manufacturers supply the appropriate lubricant as part of the pipe order. When the socketed pipe is placed in the trench, the spigot is offered to the socket with uniform contact for 360 degrees to the socket lead-in. The pipe is then pushed home. This is usually achieved in small to medium diameter pipes by using a bar. Larger diameter pipes are best joined by winching, however the key issue is to ensure the jointing effort is applied uniformly and steadily. Irrespective of the pipe diameter, when the pipes are joined, ensure that the pipe is on grade and level, and then repeat the process. Backfilling of pipelines should be undertaken at the earliest time to ensure the work just completed is protected. The requisite backfill material needs to comply with the specification. 
heavy impact materials such as large rocks, metal and timber should be removed to avoid damage to the pipe. The haunch zone and the side zone should be filled using a specified select fill to ensure adequate compaction. The backfill material should be laid in uniform layers and compacted as you go to the specified density. In particular, great care should be taken in the haunch zone and the side zone of the trench. Where applicable, commence the compaction process with use of a hand compactor prior to shifting to larger equipment. Refer to compaction charts to ensure the equipment being used is suitable for the pipeline system. Remember, it's important to compact the material and not the pipe. If steel reinforced